Hello, all of you beautiful beans out there, and welcome to the stream. I am Ra Zim, currently as Asher the Labramon. Uh, we have lots of stuff going on tonight. We are doing one of our DevTail streams where we're going to be working on our SCAR system. And other than that, we've got Mirai, who will be joining us uh, shortly to do some art on stream. And they will be taking commissions tonight. At least one. Uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah. If you guys want to get in on that art wheel, let me know now so I can get you all at it. It's all right here. For, why? What? Who are all these people? Oh, that must have gotten reset. Okay. So, yeah, if you want Who in on the... all you people? <laughs> If you want in on the wheel, let me know, or if you want to go redeem one of those uh, little redeems with the sable crowns, you are welcome to do that now as well. Uh, do remember, it's exclamation point coins, Don Brian. You can also scroll down a little bit and click on Ethereal Influence in the... Uh... In the section. Ooh, me right here. Whoosh. And... Oh, I have none. Why is this? There it is. Now you're <laughs> see. Now they can see you, Mirai. And they can see Asher. <gasps> Look at me. Yes. This is a good thing. the puppy. Oh no! Please don't kill me, Spectre! Ready to work. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to put you in a picnic basket. The picnic? The picnic basket. Oh, you're right, Nano. I I am on my evil arc, so it would definitely be an evil thing. Yes, that is very evil art. Mahaha. <laughs> so is, it, is Asher's evil arc like you know replacing like all the pillows in the bed with plushies? Uh, no, no. Uh, I I go and make uh, I, I warm up both sides of your pillow. Uh, I steal all of your left socks, and and. Star Wolf skin says, "Hello, hello, friends oh. and buddies. I bring more arts tonight, for a couple hours at least." Yay! Yeah. Sorry, I forgot to feed that through Discord. But uh, otherwise, uh, milk. Uh, I put the milk in before the cereal. Yeah. Um, Era, so you do not need to donate anything to get on the wheel. You just let me know you want on the wheel. Um, as far as that goes, though, if you do get selected, it is $33 for line art and 77 for colors. Uh, I have to hold off right now. I uh, ran short on money. I mean, I could also add you for your, uh... Tabletop piece. Uh, I could also. Piece? Yeah, for. Because uh, you already paid for that. The data. Yep. Yeah. If you want. And Merle, I could also add you onto the list to get your uh, Zorua drawn. Kind of Zora gang, let's go. If, if if I didn't need to have this icon on for exposition, I would totally be in Zora gang now. Ah, uh, yes, the Sable Crowns redeems go on the wheel, Lexi. Though both of them have been redeemed for tonight. Sorry. <laughs> but either way we'll let uh, Mirai finish the uh, Asher art there since it looks like it's basically done and then we'll do the spin 
And in the meantime, we can get on with Taldarius' PowerPoint presentation. And take us there. All right. <laughs> Star Wolf Skin says, I think tonight I'm going to finish Little Asher here and go to our first commission. Sounds good, Mirai. Oh. All right. I I'm I'm here. I'm queer. I'm listening to AOE two, and I have something to. I have exposition to go through. Let's go. Today's a good day. Um. Okay. So I have multiple proposals here. Uh, based on what sort of theme and mechanics we want to go through for this. Mostly because this is such a like complicated topic i figured that it'd be best to have uh multiple different uh you know iterations that we could go through and stuff that we could talk about so again this is a lot of this was based around the numbers that you gave me where you felt like tackle for example should be around 20 uh ember should be around 30 uh you wanted a 30 cost uh thing where it could like heal Things like that, right? Uh, so, yes. It, that was what I based a lot of this around. Uh, and it also uh, led me to, like, there was a lot of edge cases and what ifs and thinking about how absolutely fuck off expensive things were, but also how they needed to be. Otherwise, people would just get everything they wanted after, like, two or three adventures and then where's the fun and progression in that which led me thinking about like ways to restrict block off uh and otherwise gate either soft or hard i, I did make mechanics for soft gate and hard gate uh in terms of things like power you know having both available is definitely not a bad idea for the uh yes. storytellers that want it harder <laughs> Yes, but, uh, you know, I, I felt like it, it'd be prudent to make, like, versions of it that are, like, hard and so. Oh. Real quick. All so, right. uh, Nano, the way this works is that you let me know that you want on the wheel, and then I will add you to the wheel. If you come up as a winner, then I will send a PayPal invoice, and Mirai will draw what it is that you desire. Also, apparently, Stream Raiders Dungeons has ended, so... Oh, well. Back to the main thing. Yes. Alright, so... Um, and... So, a lot of this is based around the fact that, uh... In order to make the numbers good, and in order to have interesting mechanics that reward you for picking up new moves without making it prohibitively expensive to do so... Uh... A lot of this is prefaced around, uh, I did make a version of it without it, but honestly, this is the best thing I could think up, uh, where it is a system that I was thinking of calling just something basic, like, you know, uh, move upgrading, move evolution, things like that, where, uh, you could take a move that you already have, like, you know, for example, like, let's say that, like, you know, you wanted to upgrade your tackle so it was better, just like as the most basic thing, or upgrade your ember. Mm -hmm. uh, or let's say you wanted to get something where it works like akin to flamethrower, but you also didn't want to fucking pay all of that XP when you already have Ember. So I was thinking that there could be a, uh, uh, a method of upgrading your moves where, for example, like, let's say you have Ember, which is four damage but uh, your HP 10 and you kind of want it to deal a little bit more damage now. Uh, what if you could upgrade it to six damage, for example, for like an XP surcharge along with the, uh, but I didn't want that to be abused because there's a, like, then you could just make super moves. Like why would you have more than like three or four moves if you could just slap everything you want onto each of those moves and like, you know, what's like, why would you want to have like, uh, actual variety in your moves. So, I was thinking through things, and I thought that, like, when you select a move, 
uh, there could be a rule that for upgrading things on the move, you can't add on new things. Like, let's say you have a move where, like, it doesn't have a, uh, it doesn't have, like, a status effect chance. You can't add that on later, but if you have one that has a status effect chance, you can upgrade it as the move gets upgraded. So, for example, it would start at, uh, I was looking at the numbers for, uh, 20%, like, I think it'd probably be better to bump it down to 10% to start with, but that's also with the understanding that, like, you know, you can bump it up 10%, 10%, 10%, 10% over time as you get more XP and are more proficient. And the reason that I, I feel like this is the best way is because it rewards upgrading your moves, and the reason that I thought about this in the first place is because we have uh, the uh, ability to upgrade Strike, for example. With, uh, with specialties, for example. Because uh, yeah. remember how that was going to be a thing? Yeah. So I was thinking, you know, like maybe 10, maybe 15 XP in order to, like, make it so you can modify a move and upgrade it. And then you do the normal uh, upgrade cost for it. And uh, we could also do the thing, like, for other specialties that through roleplay, you could even get that uh, reduced. Or rebated, or, you know, maybe you just go, I just want a better move, I'm just going to pay it. But the thought process behind this is that, let's say you have Ember, it doesn't make, like, why would you want to buy Ember if later on you're going to get Flamethrower anyway, and it's just so much better. Or, like, you know, hey, I have Ember and Flamethrower, do I really want to, like... Like, imagine how expensive Fire Blast would be, even though effectively it's an upgrade over a move that you already previously had. So instead of designing all of these upgrade trees and trying to think about the costs of all of these moves and the chains that they go through and, hey, this is more of a side grade, this is more of this, this is more of that, I was thinking that we just make it so that way you're able to upgrade the stats that are already on your move. And then, as time goes on, what you're able to do is if you want a new effect, like let's say you go, oh, I want to have a weather effect. But obviously, like, that's not already on your move originally, because weather effects I was thinking about, obviously, they'd be kind of expensive. So if you want to get a good weather effect, you you want to pick that up as a new move. Oh, hey, you want to you want to get a good stat boost move okay well uh you know better pick up a stat boost move oh you want to boost another stat too well that stat wasn't originally on that stat boost move so you better pick up another one and it sort of lets you decide uh what you're going to focus on upgrading where like you know you could go all right well i have i have my ember in a good spot i have my fire move in a good spot it's sitting at six damage which is uh like you know the soft cap for my hp total I have it at a burn chance that I'm happy with. It doesn't make sense for me to spend the XP to upgrade that move in particular. How about I upgrade this other move that I've got in order to make it more useful? But a lot of this okay. is based around the fact that I want people to be able to explore getting new moves. And I want to encourage them to get new moves. But I also don't want them to have a bunch of shitty move that, moves that are relegated because there's no reason for them to use them ever. And so I don't want them to be super moves. I don't want them to have a bunch of useless chaff moves. Because really, like, if you're a higher level character, like, what are you using Ember for? What are you using Tackle for? <laughs> if you have access to better moves. So... What I was thinking is that they could, um... Yeah. I, I was thinking about this as well, and as far as the name of the move goes, because, like, I'm also looking at this as, like, Digimon side of things as well, where you have, like, two moves and that's all you get the entire... the, the entire time. Um... I, I was thinking about that, and I, I don't see a reason why they can't just change the name. You know, as it gets well, involved yeah, changing more. that's fine. Yeah, no, that make that makes perfect sense. But I was more talking about like the mechanics and idea, like the thought process behind this. 
because a lot of this is based around like you know just basic design principles of hey it doesn't feel good to have like spend xp on shit you know is going to be useless later and it doesn't feel good to like be like hey why would i bother buying up a new move when instead i'll just add this effect onto a move i already have both both allowing i like having either of those be the case just sort of like creates a lot of problems so you know i'm thinking that you know, let's say you have a burn chance. You can upgrade your burn chance. Uh, you have damage, or let, you can upgrade your damage. Oh, hey, you want your move to be, uh, to be, like, bypasses accuracy? So you can't really miss with it? Y yeah, sure. Have fun with it. But, uh, if it's not on the, if it's not on the move, you shouldn't be able to, like, uh, like add in extra things. Obviously, the storyteller can do whatever they want. If they go, it's a fire move, you should be able to add burn onto it. Whatever. But <laughs> my base, no adding on, like, extra shit. Okay. okay. Mostly just due, due to balance concerns of making, like, you know, why would I not just make a super move that deals a bunch of damage to the enemy, bypasses accuracy, buffs up my stage, and makes a good weather condition? And it heals me every turn. Because technically speaking, if you just kept loading all the shit onto one move, it, uh, like, that's going to happen. But then on the other side, if you make it so it's more expensive every single time you change the move, then that feels really bad if you want to do incremental changes and upgrades to it instead of saving up a bunch of XP all at once and dumping all of those upgrades on at once to save a bunch of XP. Yeah. So, what? Uh, yeah, the, the upgrade tax, I guess, would be the best way to put it. That was something that I thought of originally and tossed out because, yeah, that doesn't feel good. Oh, hey, there's a vein in the chat. But I could buy the Molten Gloves just for a little bit more burn. Um. You know what? Just but anyways, uh. So. Brain just died. You were talking you about how deep it didn't feel good to have a surcharge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, no surcharge is what I'm thinking. However, I do think that we should limit what you can have on something um, based on... I, I like the idea of you can't add more extras on, or at least be limited on what you can add on. We definitely do not want a you know those super moves that can do everything at once. Um... Yeah. We could tie it to the amount of attribute points that you have. But either way, uh, yeah. so what all is your exact, like, suggestion on all this and stuff? All right, so uh, I was uh, tooling around with a couple different things. Uh, I like the idea, I, because I just like the idea of having the surcharge, so that way, like, you know, you don't get, like, the tiniest little bit of XP and you automatically like just start maxing up your moves to like your current uh like whatever the current like soft gap is because I was thinking about having uh things like damage or intensity or the like be gated by your attribute points like how many you have total so your HP total um because you know that's the closest thing we have to any sort of uh of level system. Yeah. And uh, the reason I was thinking about that is because otherwise, like, what's to stop you from just absolutely fucking jamming, just slamming your finger over and over and over again on the increased damage button? Oh, it's slightly more expensive? Who cares? I have more dice than you. I one shot. What's, what's to stop you from slamming the button? on making it so that way you turn whatever you end up hitting with this stat decrease move into a drooling mess because you decreased, like, two stats by five. Two attributes. Like, you know, we we don't want that sort of shit to happen because that's ridiculous, that's not fun, yeah. and it just means that every single move will be instantly min-maxed to hell and back. They're, like, it's awful. 
So, uh, what I was what I was thinking was, I, I I just like the idea of having a small charge on it that can be waived by uh, like you know storyteller approval through roleplay because that's also what we're already doing for specialties and the like, where it has a cost and it can be lowered through good roleplay. I like this idea. Oh. It's basically, just to go so that way you can't just auto you, you, you can't like auto max your stuff for free. And then I was also thinking about gating it either at uh, 10 and 20 uh, in order for like 10 to be the uh, the five through eight or uh but one that I one that I was liking better was the idea that um, every five attribute points you you can add on two more damage to the move. So like uh, I mean like uh, from the cap of the starting cap, which I was thinking would be four because that's like you know the the starting move damage thing that we have. We have tackle four damage. We have pound four damage. We have all of that good shit, four damage. Even Ember, four damage. Gust, four damage. It's all four damage. That's all the starting moves. So, so I was thinking would, that that was a... What would that power uh, that be just, at max I, level? Right? You know, 50 HP then. Yeah, so if you add two every five, uh, it would be, like, kind of ridiculous, but uh, again, if you're max level, it it doesn't matter. But if you were max level, I think it rounds it out to an even 40. Um... Yeah, we definitely don't want it that high. Yeah, but I was also trying to think, like, you know, because then otherwise... <laughs> it'll take fucking forever to get to something as simple as uh, as flamethrower. That is true. Um, and actually thinking on this, um, I guess, I mean, Pokemon doesn't really have armor and such for mitigating damage like we do. So actually maybe 40 isn't too bad. Considering you can get armor later on, that... I, I mean, at least, uh, rules is written right now. Where the hell did I put it? Let's see here. Um... Yeah, you can get up to 13 integrity bonus, and that's on top of your... Uh, other stuff that's going on with it. Uh, which, uh, if you're maxed out, would be 10. Yeah. So it'd be 23. And the chances of So 40 of them... dice rolling against 23 integrity. Yeah, and those 40 dice have less than, uh, less than a 50% chance of rolling... Yeah, success. expect a value of 0. 0.44. Repeating. What do you think about this, Seda? I'm kind of liking it myself, but... I, no, I, get, I get the argument. I'm trying to figure out what's the best solution to it. Because I, I understand what, what Taldarius is saying in terms of... Yeah, you don't want to necessarily be like the... Essentially that gamer that besides, you know, hey... I'm going to put, like, all my points into, like, this really awesome custom move. And then, like, you know, 20 sessions later, you that move's kind of useless. Because, like, you've yeah. grown in power, but you've invested all this experience into a move that you can't really use anymore. <laughs> so, I'm kind of... But I also get the idea of, like, you know, hey, it'd be nice to actually be able to upgrade your moves, because... Maybe you just want to have yeah. something that, you know, you add a little bit more accuracy. Yeah, uh, the... Or just... oh, sorry. Um, so the... I, I will say... 
the idea of upgrading moves is always at the forefront for what I want to do here. Um, especially in terms of, uh, like, like I said, I don't care if they change the name. Like, you go, you start with Ember, but later on you upgrade it to Flamethrower. Go for it. more about just whatever flavor you want anyways the name the name yeah. of the move doesn't matter i'm just using it more as examples because everyone kind of gets what i'm saying if i use those those, those names but yeah so the uh I, I did give this like a lot of thought and putting like the like a very small barrier to the whole like upgrading but allowing them to upgrade is kind of the the best way that I could think of that allows people to have a real sense of progression not only for their characters but for the moves that your character is using without there being the risk of you just jamming with three moves the entire game because you can make them all do everything. Yeah, we definitely don't want that. I'm leaning towards the idea of limiting each move to maybe two or three extras, you know, uh, like adding in a burn effect or healing or I don't mind them having more than one, you know, burn in addition to a status debuff, in addition to maybe a small heal for yourself. Uh, things like that I don't mind, but we don't want too much for sure. Yeah, well, yeah. another thing to think up is that uh, this does not put, the like, the, the rules for this does not put limitations on when you're making a move, what's allowed to be on it. That's like, you know, we already have that as just storyteller discretion. So it means that if you make a move, if you have make a custom move that ends up like dealing damage, healing yourself, uh, giving a stat debuff or, or giving a status effect to the enemy and buffing one of your stats uh, and it's allowed, uh, you could you could take that shit to the bank. You could just upgrade like everything in there. All right, so, um, sorry, run that by me again. So the the I, I was trying to be very specific with the you can't upgrade things that aren't already in the move. With the idea oh, yes. that if you make a move, custom move, because we have that system, again, that's that's uh, that's a part of this that has all the bits and bobbles that you want in order to try and make a super move. With the understanding that, like, you know, you have to get all those bits and bobbles approved by the storyteller. Then you can jam upgrades on that baby every single time that you're able to or want to or, you know. You can make a deal a, a fuck ton of damage, heal yourself, give a status effect and. Uh, and buff up one of your stats. Obviously, that's like really strong, but that's with storyteller approval, so I don't care. So my focus is more about the actual, I also have a lot of the mechanics for making your own moves, because that's how what we'll be applying to the <laughs> existing Pokemon moves. Um, yep. So that's my focus here. Um, yeah. I just wanted to point out that, like, because, you know, you, you made the, the comment about, like, you don't care if they have, like, a bunch of extras on stuff. Not a bunch. Limited. I definitely wanted limited. But I don't mind a few extras. Yeah. Uh, do you have a I'm list of that, your like... proposed costs, or did you add them to the existing document? Um, okay, so I know what I want the proposed costs to be. I wanted to go line item. Uh, okay. Because I figured that that would be the easiest way to go about it. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright. Um, so first off, 
when it comes to the damage and accuracy and all that good shit. Um, how are we feeling about because uh, I, I how are we feeling about the cap and gym? Because I was thinking about the four plus two or five attributes. Uh, but uh, I I just want to know what you're what you're thinking about for that. So if I function twice, I get money. I'm uncertain at this moment. Uh, um, okay. I want to hear Seda's thoughts on that. Hmm. I'm actually not sure. All right. In that case, uh, because actually, I know I proposed it more as a hard limit, I could always tell you my idea for the soft limit side of things. I mean, because, like, part of my ideas is as opposed to, like, you know, using XP <laughs> to, like, you know, make upgrades, you kind of, like, have, like, a set list of move upgrades that you can add that you kind of almost have like a token system for, but I feel like that adds unnecessary complication to the, to the entire system. I, I think that, 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 that does, it adds a lot of complication, both to us, cause then we'll have to make all that. And then also to the, the players, cause they'll have to fucking read all of those like trees and lists. Actually an idea I just had is what if we limit Instead of having it be a, you can only spend this much XP on, or instead of having it be, you can only have this much power on an ability until, you know, it goes up and up with uh, attributes. Instead, we set a XP limit, <laughs> like a cost limit for the move. So, like, at character creation, you can only have up to 30 XP on a single move. Or that, you know, the, the value of the move. Um, yeah. That way, like, what's going through my head right now with that is if we go that route, we yeah. can open the floodgates for people to have those kinds of super moves whatever they want to have added on there I mean, except have that they then you know yeah they may have a move that could potentially apply every single status uh, effect but each one of those status effects is going to have like no percent chance to actually trigger um not to mention right. the actual power of the move would probably be low because they spent all of their the maximum amount on adding all of those status effects. But on this on the opposite vein, on a more simplistic note, I actually kind of like the idea of you taking like let's just say let's just take Dart's pellet shot, for example. As opposed to, you know, Pellet Shot becoming an obsolete move when, you know, he maybe knows his, like, I know, Flash Cannon or something. It's a move that just gets upgraded with him over time, you know, kind of representing his ability to kind of, like, further refine his, you know, his unique abilities with regards to metal. Yep. That's that's why we're making the uh, the move upgrading system along with this. So that yeah, making... Minor suggestion, possibly? Sure. You could kind of combo those things when it comes to uh, your idea um, with experience caps and then just do what D&D &D and Pathfinder and stuff do with magic items where they have, or each ability has a, an intrinsic value, one through five or some, whatever, whatever value mm -hmm. system you want to use there. And you can only get to a certain um, uh, like total value so kind um, of like let's just, let's just say like you know okay you have five ranks abilities rank one abilities can only have 100 xp rank two abilities can have 200 xp so if you want to up so the maximum you could upgrade a move in theory would be to have you know to contain a 100 xp 
But, you know, if you were to get to a certain attribute threshold that would allow you to get, have rank two moves, you could, as opposed um, to getting a new move, kind of... I'm trying to understand what is being proposed here, but jumping off of that as well. Yeah, uh, so Jace was... Or Era was saying that... Uh, yeah. So Pathfinder in particular, because d and kind of... Fifth edition, anyway, is weird on Magic Items, Three. but... Well, I, when I say D and D, um, please understand. I say three. I'm still thinking three point five E. Fair enough. Um, but with Pathfinder, it's like uh, if you add flaming onto the sword, I believe that's a plus. That's considered a plus two. If you the you got the base sword, you can add a plus one to it. So it's got just a general plus one. You add flaming onto that, it, it makes it a, essentially a plus three. Uh, because you know you yeah. got flaming and the plus one. I think that's uh, three point five is not flaming. It's plus one, by the way. Yeah, it is plus well, one. Well, still gets the point across though. You got this extra effect that counts. <laughs> yeah. I... So, um, but uh, I, I do want to actually get out my my proposed soft soft cap. This All right, let's hear that. So I was thinking that the uh, two per five, like for example, for power, because I, I came up with other ones for like obviously oh, the, real the quick. stages and intensity. Yep. Um, Mirai, if you are done, you are welcome to interrupt, by the way, by all means. Because that looks really dang good. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> oh yeah, that does. And a quick reminder to everybody, we are going to take uh, at least one commission tonight. So if you want on that wheel, let me know. It's $33 for line dart, $77 for colors. Uh, just let me know in the chat if you would like to get on the list. And if you do win, I will send you a PayPal invoice for the amount. And yeah. Oh, another question. But yeah, so the um, <coughs> the idea that I had is obviously like th this would be for different things, but like, you know, two per five for power. You can go above it, but for every point that you go above it, uh, it is uh, then considered to be um, like uh, we, we, we could determine like a flavor name for it. Uh, like a, a few that popped into my head was um uh uncontrolled like overwhelming like whatever but the idea is you could take an accuracy malice on it like automatic irrespective of the actual accuracy in order to uh you know make it so that way like you're using a move that's too strong for you you can't aim it as well but you can still use it Can I get that so as that way like we, an example we... of what you're referring to with this? All right. So let's say that we're um, <coughs> we're we're uh, we're HP ten now in the in the Lost in Chaos game. So let's say that that means that now we can handle moves up to power six without uh, running afoul of the cap. Let's say someone wanted to make a move that is power seven. That's above six. You can still make it. You can still use Star it. Wolf skin says, However, you'll be... The wheel. I'm done with this little guy. We'll take one and see if time allows for a second piece for tonight. Sounds good. One last call. You got until the end of Stream Raiders here to get in. If you want on that wheel, then let me know. Uh, we'll get back to you in a moment, Taldarius. Let's just figure out the art thing here. <laughs> Um, I will say I like the idea of that, though we also already have an overcharge mechanic that I think we may want to refine and utilize for that instead. Yeah, but I, I'm talking about, like, baked into the move itself. And the re there, there's a reason that I want it to be baked into the move itself, because of uh, some various uh, edge cases. Well, as far as that goes, like with the current plan for ability costs, 
you know, you can reduce the cost of uh, the the ability overall by simply reducing the accuracy. Yeah, but uh, the the reason that I'm talking about edge cases is because first of all, uh, there are abilities like uh, like uh, no guard, for example. Where like it would laugh at that. Uh, another another example that I want to be wary about is that <clears throat> with uh with how we have it, uh, with how we have it now, uh, specifically never miss for example, uh, cannot be applied to moves where another effect sets the accuracy to an amount. So the reason why it's important, and I want it to be baked into the move as an effect, uh, is because it would mean that you can't uh, get a move that's over that's uncontrollable for you, that's too powerful for you to control, and then slap on never miss to get around it. Ah, yeah. It, it, this is just me being a little rules lawyer and realizing an edge case where you could just laugh at the proposed thing that I have. That is a good uh, good point. Also, <laughs> let us spin the wheel! So when I hit him... Oh. And Tom Darius barely gets it. <laughs> the, the crown so redeems close. about to throw hands. <laughs> I swear, every time somebody redeems it with crowns, they get it. Every freaking time. <laughs> no, I think it was the um. Uh, remember last time with the I do things, bin. I think it was. True, and true. Where I got where the where the crown redeemers and the one person who wasn't a crown redeem got it. True. At least I think that's what happened. I, I'm a little bit foggy on it. But most of the time, the crowns redeems wind up winning. Oh no, I, I do things was a crown redeem. I do things was a crown redeem. Oh okay. Like I said, my memory is very fuzzy about that. <laughs> Alright, well, give me your info for what you want. Yeah, do you still have... Yep. I'm, I'm literally writing it right now. I just want the cough to go away. Why, why, why can cough no go away? <laughs> oh, God. It doesn't even hurt. It just, it itches so fucking bad. Sorry about that. It's just it's just annoying having my uh, my my chest like the inside of my chest itch. Oh, itch. I, I I I can imagine. <laughs> We'll see how things go, everybody. If you, uh, we might have another one, we might not. We'll see how things go, but yeah. Oh, 
Okay, I'm better. I did. I did lose my train of thought. Uh, could I get human uh, wrath for that as well? In any particular pose you want? Yeah, I, I don't care about. I don't care about the the, the pose. Uh, I don't really have a. I don't really have a human wrath. I just simply pick up myself. I'll just. This is the last time that I got it. I'm just grabbing the same thing. That is perfect. Oh. I should really get a human ref at some point. It's good for, for, for TFE things. So I did have a bit of a question because I had my own. Oh no! Okay, I think I just realized where I was at. Um, so it was about the uh, it, it was about the uh, overwhelm thing where I was going to ask, uh, did we want it to be a one for one or did we want it to be a two for one? In terms of accuracy, malice per uh, the power that you're going over. So minus two accuracy for each uh, e each uh, bonus to power. Yeah. So we can either make it a one for one or a two for one. At least like with my proposal, I'm just like trying to. I'm leaning towards two for one personally. That's what I was feeling. Especially because it's very, very easy to get things like um, eight accuracy. Like you can get that really fast if you want. Um, but another important thing is that uh, this, if it's minus two, it would be very easy for it to bracket down your multi attack. Um, your, uh, your mic is doing the crunch thing. All right, one second then. All right, can, uh, is it better? Uh, sounds about the same. All right, uh, solution number two. All right, how's it, uh, how's it sounding now? Testing, testing. Much better. Cool. Solution number two worked. But yeah, so another reason that I was thinking two would be good is because uh, that's a lot easier to bracket yourself on, especially if you go over by multiple. Because, you know, it's really easy to stack up accuracy. Uh, so if you have it two, it's more punishing. And it means that, like, you know, hey, each hit does more. But, you know, you also have to be careful because if you up it by two more damage than you should really have it at for your level, then you're effectively giving up a multi-attack for that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like the uh, two for one. Yeah. Because I, I, I feel like that's a really good way of, implement, of of encouraging players to keep effects reasonable. Especially considering the fact that, like, you know... Like, do you really want to be rolling accuracy with like two dice at uh, at a at a level where like let's say you're like level ten or fifteen or whatever like you know quote unquote level? Do you really want to be rolling accuracy with two dice and then uh, you have uh, a bit of a uh, Amos moment where like if you hit you'll deal a lot of damage but uh, you're not really hitting more than trash. I'm personally still leaning towards the idea because it also makes things simpler, I think, of the uh, an XP cost 
cap per <laughs> based on your attributes. I, feel stupid. I still like the idea of I'm also having a power a limit burns, for, so based on your burn. attributes, but yeah. maybe reduce that uh, bonus or make it kind of something that tapers okay. off over time. Okay. Because there's nothing saying that we can't just throw in a chart saying, okay, when you've got 15 HP, you can have 6 uh, power. When you've got 20 uh, HP, you can have 8 power. And then, say, 25 HP, you can have 9 power. So on and so forth. Yeah. We could totally do that as well. Uh, I was just more talking about, like, because obviously it'll be... Uh, so obviously, there's going. It's going to be a little bit of a uh, uh, possibly divisive thing, where it's like, "Hey, why can't like what like why this arbitrary limit?" So if we do the soft cap, where they're able to like do the uh, like extra power for accuracy and malice, it, it turns it more into a flavor thing of, "Oh, hey, I can't control this move yet, but I want to use it anyway." We can do both. Uh, have yeah. the soft cap for power, um, but also have the... Uh, and then, of course, once you do get to that HP limit where you unlock that uh, power level, then the accuracy penalty is uh, gone. Yeah. Don't need to spend any XP. You can just flat out use it now. Have fun. But yeah, the reason that I want to have something like that in there is because even if there was like an XP cap, because I was thinking about XP caps as well. And then I realized that like, okay, I'll just spend the entire XP cap jumping up my damage and now it just does like... Other effects are cool and all, but what if I just one-shot them instead? You know what I mean? Yeah. So... I, I definitely thought about that, but I was... I was uh, a little bit more focused on how do I make it so that way people just don't go uh, me have hammer, me smash. Well, we've got two others here to share their thoughts. Seda, Era. Hmm. One moment right. still feeding snake. Ah. Well, uh, just to recap, right now we are thinking... Uh, we don't have exact numbers yet, but your maximum total XP cost per move will be limited based on your total HP. Uh, and that XP cost can go up over time. Uh, no limit on what you want to throw on it, but of course, you know, when you've got a max of how, many, how much XP you can ca uh, spend... If you throw on too many effects, they're going to be very, very weak ones. Uh, see you later, Liam. Um, and on the flip side, if you do, and we will have a soft cap on power. So you can't go full glass cannon with it. Uh, well, I guess it wouldn't necessarily be glass cannon, but well, it's not, that's well, beside it's not the point. Cannon, it, it's stopping people from going full Trogdor. And just maxing damage on a single move with all of your XP cap, and then hitting things for 50 damage. Yeah. But I, I mean, um... How... Hmm. Because actually, how... To back up a little bit, how is the damage on the moves calculated? Like, is it just a flat amount, or is it based off of a stat? Uh, base damage is a stat by itself on the move. And then you add on a, uh, what you do is based on the skill you use to attack. So for example, if it's a, uh, if it's a melee move, like tackle, like I'm saying move as a Pokemon. If it's like a melee move, like tackle, you add your brawl. If yeah. it's, uh, like, you know, some sort of, if it's like some sort of special, so like, like using psychic or whatever. Uh, you'd use your range, and you add in how many skill points you have in that to the damage. So, for example, if I use Gust that has four damage and I have two ranged, I roll six damage dice.
Okay, so... Summarize. You try to use Tackle, it's got 4 power. In Pokemon, it's got 40, but we divide by 10. So 4 power. Uh, that plus your Brawl. You got 2 Brawl, you're rolling 6 dice. For damage. Um, from there, it uh, whatever you roll is reduced by their integrity. Uh, but beyond that, you as long as you roll one success, you're guaranteed one damage. Mostly because we we don't want someone just like absolutely trogdoring their their integrity and being effectively invulnerable like early on for no reason. I don't know why. I really like I'm really liking using Trogdor as an example. It doesn't actually even mean I, anything, but I bet people understand. I have no idea what you're talking about with that, I'll be honest, so the fact that you're making oh. it up makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so uh, Trogdor is uh, an, uh, a funny internet name for barbarians. Uh, there, there's multiple green texts that have the text Trogdor Smash. Uh, so I was thinking about it as in, like, you know, what are all of these mechanics and all of these added things? Let me just add more damage. Trogdor Smash. Tro Trogdor wants to be tanky. Trogdor max uh Trogdor maxes integrity. Trogdor take no damage now. Sorry about that, I'm back. No worries. But yeah, so that's 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 the that's the Trogdor. So, Fox? Uh, Brain Fuzzy, if I understand everything correctly, it sounds fine. I think my only worry is I heard mention of a custom move, but I didn't really get to hear because I was doing a no-no and trying to hand-feed my snake. So, the whole idea on this system is... Basically, putting in all the tools for you to make your own moves. But what we're proposing is putting a cap on how much XP you can cast, you can spend on a custom move. Or it also applies to standard moves because the uh, basically the. The way we're going to treat the Pokemon move list is these are just predefined yeah. custom moves. <laughs> Understandable, as long as the caps are balanced. I'd feel bad if a player ever ended up with the useless move uh, because they built so wrong. Fun fact, I, uh, I had a well, as far as that goes, uh, retraining it, What's we'll put in rules for that. Uh, like, if a player like just feels like, you know, they just. So if you know Built their character wrong, we'll yeah, put in rules for retraining. Yeah, I mean, that kind of logic was why my brain was originally being like, almost if you had like, almost like an upgrade token where you could be like, okay, well, hey, I have reached this attribute level, I can get one upgrade token, I can put in any move. And, you oh. know, each each move could have like, you know, you know, maybe three tokens max, and it can't be the same token. Ultimately, I would love to see some of examples of it in practice if that makes sense not necessarily in play but some sort of chart or something and then like an example move or two to see how i ultimately feel about it at the core it sounds fairly solid well part of the problem is is that we're trying to come up with a baseline on this because we can absolutely go back through and adjust it later yeah um after we actually get some playtesting with it. Because, like, I was going through 
the uh, costs on things and realized very quickly, oh, this is a ridiculous amount of uh, XP to be spending on Ember. Here's a follow-up question. Are we planning on taking all the attributes that can be added to a move or be part of a move and listing them out? We already kind of did, even though I was against it. Okay. Um, yes, we are. I want to give the players a lot of little toys. Basically, the moves are like Legos. You got a big box of these different things that you can add into the move and build whatever you want. I am okay with it. I like Legos. Yep. But, yeah, so... Uh, the, the, the kind of point that we're discussing here is focused a bit uh uh we're, we're, we're kind of like trying to focus a bit on the more theory behind it than the exact details as a theory it sounds fine but it's one of those things where i can't say anything until i see um examples but i'm also tired and my brain doesn't always work right so i can see it in prior or i can in theory it sounds solid it sounds fine an experience cap would definitely be nice. Um, I think the hard part is going to be balancing out the costs and figuring out what the cap should be. That is uh, that that is definitely the hardest part. We're just trying to figure out where to even start with this. Like, do we want to have a cap? Do we not want to have a cap? Do we uh, want to go with something else altogether? Uh, do we want to just only limit the max power on it do we want to you know there's lots of different proposals and possibilities here so we got to find a starting point well you're gonna need a cap no matter what because if you don't put a cap on it somebody's going to uh i believe the term that was being used was trogdor yeah trogdor remove yeah uh if you look in media sharing i put rayquaza trogdor the peasant burninator so, uh, as for moves like self-destruct and explosion, those are going to have specialized rules. I don't know how we're going to handle those yet. Um, you roll a new character. <laughs> 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 no, nah, but the easiest, the, the easiest way to put it is that, like, you know, you set your HP to zero... Uh, it, you stabilize automatically, and I then don't think I have them stabilize. Personally, look, if you have them stabilize automatically from like even though they have things like poison on them, they should probably stabilize from using a move. Fair, fair. But they also uh, no, did just explode. I was going to say, um, if they use the move, the current encounter ends in the victory for the party, but we now have to spend the next two sessions putting you back together. <laughs> like a Lego kit. I'm going to get that I was thinking more But the instructions are written in Japanese. Nah, you, 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 you're trying to put Humpty Dumpty back together with Legos, and all of the instructions are for an Ikea chair. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, wait, Jace! You are now a chair. <laughs> wait, like, no, 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 no! You're wrong. That's Jet's right front paw, not the left rear. That's his paw, not his tail. But it's fluffy, and I'm not fluffy. Where'd you get these pieces from? Star Wolf Skin says, got the sketch done. How does that look? Should have this done pretty quickly <laughs> from here. I shall make it bigger. Bigger. Ooh, looks good. I, I like the I like the little speech bubble with the exclamation point. Anything else to change? Uh 
I'd probably like a little bit more hair floof, but other than that, yeah, it looks great. You do great work, Mirai. They do incredible work. Yep. Also, uh, Metronome already specifically has rules because I was a crazy man and went through and uh, put in Rao. Uh, well, not Rao. I, I, that, that's just a habit. Scar compatible moves on everything uh, from the entire move list, literally the entire Pokemon move list. Uh, the rules for Metronome are this move uh, selects another move randomly and uses it immediately. The storyteller may decide what it is, or may you you may roll on this move list to see what you get. I will say, uh, Pokemon moves that are out there like that will not be getting their. Uh, we're not going to be putting those kinds of things into the base scar system. Like Metronome is going to be a. Pokemon uh, supplement exclusive rather yeah. than part of the base scar system. Uh, Self-destruct and explosion I'm thinking are going to also be uh, that as well. Maybe they are a bit more down to earth. Uh, but in, yeah. in the ability cost section, there is uh, a self damage user reduced to zero HP section. Yeah. All right, Merle, sleep well. Thanks for coming by. Bye bye, Merle. All right, so right now it sounds like the current uh, proposal for a XP cap based on HP is what we're wanting to go with then. Uh, yeah, sounds good to me. I am thinking to give you a general idea on that for the cap, Taldarius. Let's uh, start with 30 at 8 HP. And then at 10 HP, we can bump it up to uh, 35, maybe 40. What? I was thinking more like 50. Really? Well, because the, the reason that I'm thinking is because if you think about the damage numbers on it, uh, if you want them to even be able to, like, add in damage and an extra effect, for example, uh, they need to actually kind of have some leg room for it. Fair enough. I will leave this up to you then for your proposal probably for next week. Yeah. Um. Because uh, I'm going to go through a lot of this and, like, you know, put out some actual number examples. Cool. But, yeah, a lot of, a lot of this is... Uh, was more about the theory work and a lot of my ideas for this because yeah there's obviously i kind of had a lot of ideas here and i wanted to like figure out where we were kind of like trying to stand on everything because uh the more it gets narrowed down the better i can do with uh actually like putting together examples because then otherwise i'd be sitting here putting together examples of literally everything Everything, everywhere, all at once. Yep. Um, another thing to go... A finite quantity of upgrades for a move. Uh, I don't really want to limit them, Varian. And also, when it comes to that, uh, we are going to allow them to... Uh, It basically, uh, when it comes to the, uh, I just lost my train of thought. All right, well, I'll take over then. Uh, one, one, uh, one problem with a finite quantity of upgrades is that then it encourages people to sit there and EXP hoard for a long ass time. 
So that way they can get the most upgrades on their special move that they want to have be their, their main specialty move. And it means that they're not going to touch it for like 15 sessions and then like max out the XP cost on it. Like with all with like a lot of their accrued XP that they didn't spend on their stats and skills and all that. So it, it just if you have a limited number of times you can fuck with a move and uh, and upgrade things about it, it just means people are going to rat hole away XP for a long ass time until they do all of the upgrades at once. And yeah. hey, they only they only upgraded it once. They could still upgrade it a, a four more times before they hit their five upgrade cap. Yeah, I mean that's kind of what we're, part of the reason why my brain was almost going with like almost an upgrade token system where like you'd earn an upgrade, you know, per like you know every five attributes, and then you could just decide which moves you're gonna apply that on max three per move. But it's messy. But. It's the best way I can kind of think about the time to kind of like limit some of those concerns as well. Yeah, because one of the big problems is having to think about all of these like absolutely massive amount of edge cases and like how all of this could get fucked up by like very weird out there things. Kind of like what we were dealing with earlier today <laughs> regarding Pathfinder. Yeah. Although to be fair, that one wasn't actually that hard to decipher. Like, just by just by the vibe of it, you can kind of tell it was fucky, anyways. But uh, I didn't I didn't go over all of it with you, but there there were more reasons why it didn't work. But yeah, either way, um, you got something to work on. Um, ideally, please have a proposition for it by next Thursday. Yep. Uh, Seda... Uh, mm -hmm. What's up, Tadarius? I was just gonna say, uh, like, not trust me, I kind of already had one, but the problem is, is that in order to, like, finalize it and make it proper, I just kind of needed to know, oh, hey, like, which of these five ideas do you want me to, to go down for this proposal? Fair. Fair. Um... For you, Seda, I did ask, you know, send you a message, but never got a reply to it. I was kind of hoping to get you to do the item list. Yeah, I... I'll be honest, I should have responded, but the reason why I didn't respond is I'm also trying to figure out my current workload. Because I do have a lot going on on the side. That's taking up my time. Well, the item list is more of a long-term thing that doesn't really need to be done now anyways. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just some work on it here and there would be hugely gotcha, appreciated. Gotcha. Um, honestly, I'm drawing a lot of inspiration on it from the uh, <laughs> massive amounts of Pathfinder stuff there is out there. I don't want to copy just Pokemon and such, but we still definitely need some items and such. Like, what kind of items did you have in mind? I mean, obviously, like, you know, there's the Pokemon items and stuff, but I guess, like, general stat boosting items or... Things that like give you ability to use, let's just say, a um, maneuver for for free or an extra version of that maneuver. Actually, it's usually it's more mundane stuff than that. Um, like I brought it up on stream here, but what what I started working on, uh, you know, <laughs> bedroll, blanket, camping pad, folding chair, tents. Uh, the packs, etc., etc. Uh, provisions, you know, food and such. Uh, lighting, torches and whatnot. Um, coming up with, putting down costs and how much bulk they have. Hmm.
You know, the kind of fluff stuff that is in most tabletop games that I kind of wanted to... I, that I do want to have here for our system. Hmm... Oh, I got you, I got you. Sorry to interject, but I think I am going to dip. I am getting really tired. All right, All sleep right. well. I'll see you Good tomorrow. Hey, hey. Fetch! Fetch! Rawr. Very rawr. Alright, uh, what were the other things that I wanted to go over? Uh, the AoE costs, that'll be something that I'll leave to you, Todd Arius. Figure that out. Um, yeah, that's kind of intrinsically with the move list thing. Well, yeah, move creation. Yeah. This thing. I probably should have actually written more of a note to the advancement thing. Um, because I have no idea anymore what I, what, what this was about. Um, but there is one thing that I wanted to go over with both of you, uh, because we've had some uncertainty on it. Um... So, there's going to be... I, what I am thinking is having some specialties that are actually feats. Uh, things that are required to... The, basically to expand the capability of a skill. Uh, for example, lockpicking. Um, it would be under subterfuge. However, you'll need to pick up a feat... For lock picking in order to do lock picking. <laughs> it'll be relatively cheap, but it'll still have that cost, and without that feat, it'll be a minus one. Uh, but if you're attempting to do lock picking. Good night, I do things. The other two skills that especially would be impacted by this would be craft and perform. I'm... Being able to just use the craft skill... Because like D&D, &D, for example, that, you know, D&D &D and Pathfinder. When you put ranks into craft, you're putting it into craft blacksmith or craft bookbinding. Uh, yep. You're not just, here's your craft skill. I don't really want to have the sheet that... I don't really want to have a massive list for just crafting and your different levels in it. Um, I want to yep. simplify it a little bit more than that and have, like, you have to pick up a feat to do craft, uh, like, craft blacksmith or craft bookbinding or leatherworking, whatever. Yep. Um, but what I'm thinking is that without that feat, if you're still trying to craft something that you don't have a feat for, you'll be doing so at a minus one. Uh, All right. I know I got some uh, feedback. I don't think you liked that idea, but correct me if I'm wrong. Can you feed that one more time for me? 
Uh, it's the craft and perform requiring the craft and perform Could skills you, you... requiring yeah, something my... extra. Yeah, my problem with that is that it's only for you know a very limited select of skills. Like, I would probably prefer if they didn't have that penalty. Um, and just, you know, you having a bonus to them. Or effectively, they were balanced by the fact that, you know, hey, you're accounting for someone who's competent in it to have the bonus. And anyone who has the bonus would probably succeed, but anyone who doesn't have the bonus would probably not succeed. Or um, be a bit more difficult to succeed. Almost kind of effectively, like, ma you know, making, like, like the D&D &D equivalent, like, a DC check of, you know, 10 versus 15. Someone who has the bonuses and the skills would probably pass that 15 a lot easier than someone who doesn't have anything. So I feel like trying to put a penalty on there when the storyteller could put an increased difficulty would be a bit more of an elegant and streamlined system. The alternative option, which the main reason I don't want to go this route is just because of the character sheet, because everything is so lined up nicely as it is, is going, is separating them out and having it so when you do put a dot into craft or perform, you're putting it into craft blacksmith or perform singing. Uh, things like that. Hi, Loberon. Um, no, Loberon. At, at, at that point, make an entirely different set of... An entirely different skill tree for craft skills, because that's going to make things way too complicated on, well, you know, increasing your points. I will say on that front, that is how D&D &D and Pathfinder have done it forever. Um, they literally just have a, they, they've got, Play that craft section, yeah, yeah, they, they've the got, craft knowledge. Uh, on the sheet, they've got like craft and then parentheses with a blank line for you to write in whatever it is. <laughs> Which... I kind of lean more towards that. Only problem is the character sheet. Because <gasps> mm. the character sheet is so nicely lined up without this, but... Mm, it wouldn't be so be fair, bad if we could find something in the natural skills to separate out or do something else with altogether. Like, I feel like if you want to go down that route of having, like, the more D&D-esque where, like, you know, yes, you have a craft or perform skill, but it is in a specialized manner, I would cut that entirely from the, um, from the, um, from where it is in the sheet as is, because yeah. trying to have craft under knowledge when you're going to say craft or perform you know, have their own subcategories that are specialized. I would almost say, like, hey, like, hey, take, um, take perception, perform, and, um, craft out of their, out of their trees, make a little separate category for them down below, and then you can have a special per perception, you know, hearing, smell, perform singing dancing craft armor because well, we're all, it's we're not doing it with one from each we got two from train skills i know we're doing it with because of subterfuge as well well no subterfuge um we wouldn't be doing it with subterfuge it would just be a feat that you could get to expand the capability of the skill oh okay yeah Right now, the only thing that comes to mind for me that would fall under that, well, probably two things. 
would be lockpicking and uh, forgeries or disguises, things like that. Um, I'll probably lump those two together, honestly. Um, so, subterfuge isn't that big of a concern. It would just be perform and craft. What we could do is move initiative off of the skills list, just so we have those seven in each column. Uh, if we're moving perform and craft away, that is. Um, Cause initiative is a bit more murky of one that could be better put elsewhere, probably. I mean, uh, like, I, I get why you want to do this, but we... Hmm. Like, it really does, like... Because, like, you know, for, for form, I can kind of see it. Uh, For craft, I can definitely see it. But... We also have skills like science that you specifically need to have a uh, a specialty uh, in in order for it to work properly. I have removed that, uh, so that that one no longer requires a specialty. It's just I have put in a note into the doc that occasionally your storyteller may require something that your general knowledge in the skill may not apply may not be enough um like if you are in there if you're trying to solve a puzzle like i put into the doc and it's a chemistry based puzzle you're trying to mix chemicals and get some kind of reaction to solve the puzzle uh your general science knowledge may not be suitable enough, so you may have a penalty to your role. But that would be a thing that the storyteller decides. Also, be right back one sec. Yeah, I just don't like the idea of trying to break apart skills like this, because it's going to turn it very messy very fast. <laughs> Well, the only two that I am planning to do that with is Perform and Craft. Um, craft because, you know, they're both the same reason. You know, singing is a lot different from playing a violin or dancing. Uh, and then on the craft side, you know, Blacksmithing is exceedingly different from bookbinding, or leatherworking, or basket weaving. <laughs> um, it would get messy, sure. But... Well, I mean, by that logic, you know, being a leader is a lot different than standing there menacing for presence. You know, uh... Uh, so, like, you know, knowing what sort of foods are safe to eat for survival is a lot different than being able to read weather patterns. Like, the skills are very specifically broad. Okay, what is your proposal instead of just poking holes in it? Well, I mean, I just, uh, again, like I said earlier, like, like I, I I don't really feel the need to break apart skills like this. Because if the point of it is that, like, you know, things are wildly different, even within the same skill, then we're going to need to start breaking up a lot of skills. Because a lot of things are, in fact, wildly different than other things that are under its umbrella. Like, you know, for example, treating a laceration is a lot different than uh, attempting to uh, 
uh, attempting to diagnose a chronic illness for medicine. Lore by itself is already like that. That should probably be split up into like 15 different things. If we're going by this logic, I just don't like I don't agree okay. with splitting it up like this. But what is your proposal for a solution to this? Just ignore it? I, again, like I I don't feel the need to break it up like this. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so our... But what I asked about was the... I, I asked about, do we want to have a penalty to crafting if you don't have the uh, feet for whatever you're trying to craft? Hi, Balasar. <coughs> Or do we want to go a different route on this? Ah, okay. Um. So look, I, I I know what you I know what you're upset about with like you know uh, craft and perform being very generalist. When they they are in fact like generally like re require specific subsets of knowledge, but I I really don't see the reason why we can't just give it the same treatment that we gave science, for example, because you just said that you changed it so that way, you know, the storyteller may require that you have a, uh, a, a certain specialty in it in order to be able to properly effectuate it. So, like, for example, for performing, like, you know, you may not have the required specialty, so, like, not only would you be missing your, like, a specialty if you did have one, you'd also be getting a malice on top of it. I, I just don't know why we're... Because, you know, originally it was, like, my point was that we're going to have to break up a lot of skills. Uh, because we're already also doing it to science. But... Now I'm just sitting here like, why? well, we already have a solution that we've done that works for science, who the original point that we were, like, acting weird about it is because, like, you know, being a geologist won't make you any better at mixing up chemicals properly, generally, and being a chemist. So if the solution that we're using for science is to just require that you have a specialty Otherwise, you may get a malice. I don't see why we can't do the same for craft and for perform. That... So my logic on this, when it comes to science, you've got a lot of, you in general, all of the different parts of science have their foundations in a generalized form. You know, the scientific method applies to all <laughs> fields of science. Um, okay. And... Hi, I'm back, but I'm kind of... I, I kind of... Heard left at Taldarius's comment and then I'm coming back on yours and like I, I, I feel like okay actually I'll keep my mouth shut I just want to listen alright we'll just go with it as it is then no penalty what is it as it is to craft anything no requirement for anything just leave it as is yeah i mean my kind there, of you're just as good at doing anything uh you were cutting out there also your stream is buffering so i think it was just your internet again yes my internet's you... having issues again Back. Back. yeah my kind of um my kind of like thought process and they're kind of combining what i've heard is I personally am on board with the idea that, you know, if I say have four dots in crafting, then that's 
that's the four dice I'd roll on top of like the other like attribute um, associated dice. Um, and the core logic there being, you know, jumping off what you were saying, Zim, you know, if you are a there, there are certain skills that a geologist and a physicist and a chemist would all share in that general understanding of scientific principle, methodology, um, investigation, um, experimentation, observation. Um, and I feel like that being unified and not rece receiving a penalty straight out streamlines things. But let's just say I take a specialty in biology. Um, I get a meaningful bonus to that um, to that associate skill if it's a biology based check that would, you know, make me more likely to succeed um, on whatever I'm using that skill for. Um, as opposed to, you know, almost by default, putting a penalty on someone. That way it's streamlined, um, d doesn't get too overcomplicated, but if you take a specialty in something, you get that bonus. Though I, I, I say I, that... Either way, if you have a specialty, you'd still get the plus one. Yeah, and, and I am saying that understanding where you're coming from, Zim, in terms of like, yeah, a music performer, you know, <laughs> would have a different set of skills to a, a belly dancer. Um... But I guess there was those soft transferable skills there of being able to read and entertain a crowd. Um, All right, we will. Keep it, uh, keep it with everything else then. So is, uh, are you still there, Zim? Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering because I saw the, the circle appear on the side for, like, an extended period of time. So I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, my net is having the same problem again. Sag. Okay, yeah, what uh what next? Actually, hold on, you're gonna have to give me a second because I'm getting the ball. I will be right back.
Hello there, Left Wolf. Thanks for pinning that done, Brian. Alright, so we've gone over, we've got this. <clears throat> we have the boost system. We got that dealt with. Um, I still have no idea why I put a question mark at the end of this. What was I thinking about with that? I cannot remember. This art is looking heckin' adorable. Sorry guys, I was just messaging with Kurt to figure out when he wants to... Because, uh, next step is probably going and getting a new modem. Uh, replacing the, you know, trading out our modem. Um, that's what customer service said. I don't think that's actually gonna fix anything, but that's what they're wanting Nano me to do next. Bit shade ops is ringing the Martin so, phone. yeah.
Because of course, getting somebody to actually come look at the line and fix the line, because I'm pretty sure that's where the problem is, is a nightmare. Woo, corporate America. America, floof, yeah. Hmm. That doesn't work as well. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But I would be saying yeah to more floof.
All right. Um, not sure where if Taldarius is coming back, but uh, I think that was the main stuff I wanted to go over tonight. Damn it, Dead Bride! <laughs> Dom, da damn it! Now, 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 I want to just do like a parody of the montage song, but it's just basically like doing the montage of a slow TF. Okay, sorry. Um, like I said, I was messaging with Kerr trying to figure out when we can go exchange the modem. I really don't think the modem's going to fix this problem, uh, but... Oh yeah, this was the other thing I wanted to go over with Taldarius. And you here as well. Uh, Seda. Not that you two are going to be affected by it, but the temporary evolution thing. But that's something that uh, is really just for the Digimon games.
Star Wolf Skin says, I believe I can call this one done. Assuming everything looks okay, though for a bit of sad news I have a nasty headache all of a sudden and I think that'll have to be all for the night. That is fair, Mirai. I... Taldarius unfortunately stepped away, so we're gonna have to see, uh... He'll have to give feedback later, but I think it looks great. And I think this might be where we call the stream. We'll probably talk about the temp evolutions off stream, but... Uh, the stream itself is just suffering really bad, so... Yeah, I, I think it looks great, though. Heckin' amazing work. Just like everything else who touched me, Rai. But, yeah, the net decided to just fail me again. We've got a plan for taking care of it tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, have a good night, Mirai. Thank you. And for everybody out there, thank you so much for joining us today for the Stream Muttons Dev Tales Scar uh, session, as well as an art stream. Uh, check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Mastodon, Patreon, and more. They are on the website, as well as down in the description below through our link tree. Thank you to my patrons, tippers, and subscribers. It is your support that allows the stream to continue to happen. I can't do this without your guys' help and support, so thank you. Consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It's one of the best ways to support the channel, though you can also do so by picking up packs of cards through stream loots, tipping to the channel directly, or subscribing to our YouTube. But for now, thank you so much for joining, and I bid you the most fondest a duke. A woo!